Jesus went to a town called Nain, and his disciples and a large crowd accompanied him. As he approached the gate of the town, a dead man was being carried out, the only son of a widowed mother. A considerable crowd of townsfolk were with her. The Lord was moved with pity upon seeing her and said to her, Do not cry. Then he stepped forward and touched the litter. At this, the bearers halted. He said, Young man, I bid you get up. The dead man sat up and began to speak. <clears throat> then Jesus gave him back to his mother. Fear seized them all, and they began to praise God. A great prophet has risen among us, they said, and God has visited his people. This was the report that spread about him throughout Judea and the surrounding country. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters of Christ, as we read the scriptures and reflect on the lives of the saints, we can see God little by little in each of their lives, and as we reflect on the scriptures, recreating what was supposed to be all from the get-go, the Garden of Eden. Notice in our scripture reading, when the dead man was raised and given back to his mother, their response was, God has visited his people. That raises in my mind, at least, an interesting question. If God visited his people in that instance, what would it be like if we were always with him? Not just a visit every now and again, a phone call, a postcard, a keeping interview, love and kisses, bye bye, but all the time living with him. Now that gospel and St. Monica's prayers all begin to take on an entirely more profound light, doesn't it? Because now all of a sudden, our Lord's message to the woman in the gospel, which is picked from St. Monica's feast day, a mother crying over her son. If God is with his people all the time, there is no sin, there is no death, there is no weeping, there is no pain of separation from one loved ones. All of these things, my brothers and sisters, are the result of our stupidity, our selfishness, and our sin. That's why the comic, the opening prayer, tells us, regret bitterly your sin, because it was the sin that led to all the things that the widow of name and Monica had to endure. Regret bitterly your sins. Here we are in the Jerusalem of Poland, and we're reminded of Calvary, where our Lord's bitter passion precedes the bitterness with which we are to regret our sins. Providential. Not so. My brothers and sisters, regret your sins, because they are the undoing of evil. They're the undoing of God's original plan. 